Hey everybody, it's Aaron here with Robert and welcome to Get Your Geek On's retro review of Halloween movies. Halloween themed movies, I don't know, whatever, horror, horror movies. Horror movies, yeah, we're back. Horror, yeah. We're back. Uh, we've, we've moved into the 21st century. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. Our previous two movies were, uh, what, from the 70s, both of them, uh, The Exorcist yeah, 73, and wasn't it? Halloween, yeah, I think Exorcist is 73, Halloween is 78, I think. I think so, I think you're right. Um, but now we're into the 21st century, welcome, uh, and everybody. we are talking Saw, first released in 2004, uh, which I, I don't think they even they used, used that. The, that line's not even in it. That line's think. not in this movie. I think I think they he talks about playing a game, but I think I it was think a trailer he, piece only. I there's think. no asking of the question. They, people don't get a choice of no. whether or not they want to play the game. They are yep, you just play it. <laughs> Um, and you know, of course, not playing the game would be a choice in and of itself. Yes, uh, a deadly one. So, um, yeah, this was my first time watching this movie. You you had seen it before, right? M- many moons ago. Yeah, like it's probably been a good almost twenty years kind of thing since I've seen it because I think I saw it when it first came out. Yeah, because I remember two thousand four. Yeah. yeah, and I remember the ending because I was like, okay, I know it's about to happen from that point forward, so I know I saw it. Yeah, but I couldn't remember the stuff leading up to it. And I definitely feel like we need to clarify that this will be a spoiler discussion. Yeah. Uh, so if you, you know, if you have not seen Saw you um, and you, and for some reason you don't know the twist, because even though I had never seen it, I did know the twist. Um, yeah, right. Although it's still, twist. although it still got me, there were a couple things that still I, I didn't know. Um, so I'm excited uh, to talk about this movie, but yes, we will be spoiling uh, Saw, but uh, before we get into it, of course, this is directed by James Wan. This is his first feature film. Um, he's gone on to great acclaim with other horror movies, uh, including another one that I think we're going to be doing uh, as part of this review session. Uh, I think he did Insidious as well. Um, and then, That's of course, also... you know, now he did Aquaman. Um, so, yeah, I mean, James Wan is, is definitely this was this announced him and he's he's made a name for himself. Lee Whannell, um, who wrote this with him, they and also stars in it as um, one of the characters. He's Adam um, is also a director. Now he did, um, I think upgrade that came out a few years ago that a lot of people really enjoyed. I thought that was a pretty good movie as well. Um, and of course we've got, you know, other smaller character actors, whether it be a Carrie Ulls, uh, Danny Glover, um, you know, I completely guys... forgot Danny Glover was in this to be 100% honest with you. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, he is in it, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's a few other, but it mainly focuses on, you know, Carrie Eels and, and Lee Winnell in, in this dingy, dirty, nasty bathroom. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. As they're, they're chained on opposite sides of the room with a dead body in the middle. And one of them, uh, they're each given a goal. Adam's goal is to escape and, uh, Dr. Lawrence Gordon, who's Carrie Ewell's character, his goal is to kill Adam before time runs out. Otherwise, his wife and daughter will be killed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that is how it starts. We pick up information as the movie goes on. There's a lot of um, kind of flashbacks. <clears throat> There's a lot of it, unique kind of camera tricks as they're obviously playing yes. with a low budget. Um, they're really trying to you know, like the car chase scenes really stands out because clearly they're not driving oh, cars. Yeah. We get no exterior shots of the cars driving down the oh, streets yeah. or anything. They're they're and I think I even read they were like in a parking garage, you know, as they were doing it, and they were just <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but you know, it's very low budget, but uh, I think you know, for the budget for its time, I think it's it's well made. I do think it holds up. Um, <clears throat> and I have to say I, I enjoyed myself watching this movie. I I didn't know if I would. Um, and I think that, you know, further entries in this series have been described as like, you know, blood porn or things mm-hmm. like that, um, which I, I definitely am not as interested in. Right. Um, but I, but I had heard that this one, you know, isn't, isn't as far into that. And it's more, um, you know, a, a better movie, a better story and those types of things. And I, I think, you know, not, not having seen any of the other ones, this one, I, I very much enjoyed. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was. I mean, and I kind of go. I want to talk about what you said earlier that this this is a low budget horror film. I mean, mm-hmm. we've come from seeing The Exorcist. We've come from seeing Halloween, 
And I think Halloween was also for that time was a low budget too, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And w- I kind of want to comment on it because low budget now for this film, and I, I looked it up, it's a, it cost about a million dollars to make this film. So back then it would have been a lot of money for like Halloween probably, but you know, inflation, everything else, low budget films are about a million dollars and it grows in the box office well over a hundred million dollars. Oh yeah. This so is one of the most profitable films of all time. When you look at just percentage wise, exactly. how much, how much, you know, they paid to make it versus how much it actually made um, easily. One of the most profitable movies that has ever released. Uh, and for good reason, again, yes. I think it's, it's a good movie. Um, you can tell, you know, Lee Winnell, uh, this is his first acting performance. And you can tell, um, you know, like there's there's not the highest acting quality uh, necessarily in this movie throughout. Um, there are some shortcuts that they take. But I think one of the things that works really well that was clearly a budgetary decision was some of the um, kind of security camera footage that yes. that works it's it's yes. clearly it's designed to kind of fill in some gaps and help with editing and do those things but it ends up working for the movie um right and so it's one of those things where you know we we know a famous story of you know like things not going to plan and now we have to improvise and and that's how we oh, end yeah. up with something famous something like jaws where you know the shark <laughs> was supposed to be in a lot more of the movie uh but then you know, Steven Spielberg decided to actually shoot it in open water because he's an insane person uh, and it didn't work. The shark prop didn't work in the salt water as it had worked in the freshwater tank they tested it on. And so <laughs> they had to basically re redecide or reinvent how they were going to film those shots. And that's why the shark is barely in any of the movie. And it's always just, you know. We see yeah, the reactions yeah. to it. We see the people. Yeah, we see the yeah. fin, but we don't actually see the shark really, right? Um, in most of the movie, and and that's why. And that, and so I feel like this movie does some similar things, where it's like we're restricted by budget, so we have to come up with creative ways to to exactly. tell the story. And I think they did it very well. And they did. And I think the way, because I mean, again, we we have low actors. I think probably at the time, Danny Glover was probably the biggest one in there, maybe at yeah, that I mean, time. It, Again, this is early 2000s, so like the Lethal Weapon franchise has been done for 10, 15 years. Yeah. You know, Carrie Yules was kind of big in late 80s, early 90s with like Princess Bride or, you know, oh, I uh, was in that. Men in Tights. He's, he's a man. Oh, he, uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I meant him. Um, My mind's. Hey. So, but, but yeah, I mean, neither one of them was ever necessarily at the like, they were never movie stars. Like, right. You know, they, they were actors and and quality actors but neither one of them was ever you know like i'm gonna carry this franchise even you know lethal weapon that was mel gibson's franchise like let's be honest um and so yeah i mean it's it's an interesting mix of of actors um and again i i have to say so i knew again talking about the spoilers i knew the twist that the dead body in the restroom wasn't actually the dead body that that was J- jigsaw i knew jigsaw was played by tobin bell so early yeah. in the movie when we get that scene in the hospital and he's in the hospital bed i'm like okay that's jigsaw i knew that was jigsaw right i also you know picked up on pretty quickly that the guy who had kidnapped the doctor's wife and, and daughter was, was the, the orderly, orderly from the hospital. Yeah. I was like, Oh, it was like, Oh, and this is where it got me is I thought they were working together because I know just from, you know, anecdotal information over the years, right. I know that jigsaw has had, you know, followers and other people that have helped him. And yep. so I thought that's what was going on. And I, I didn't understand that reveal until it <laughs> happened that, you know, the orderly was also part of the game. He was a mm-hmm. victim as well. And so that worked really well for me because I was, yeah. I, I was kind of watching this, like, I know the twist. I know what's yeah. happening. And then that, I was like, what? Oh, that's so good. I like that so much better than just him having an accomplice. Like I yeah. thought that was a really unique and fun twist to it. Um, and I, and I really like that, uh, that aspect of it. I will say, you know, there's a couple of things in this that i don't necessarily um agree with or love like i think that obviously he's making you know the the characters make choices but like if you think about the woman that escaped from like the bear trap thing right um you know there was another person who really didn't get a choice like the choice was hers either kill him to save herself or 
you know, or, or die. Right. But he didn't get a choice. He didn't get a chance to play the game. So I thought that was a little bit odd that there was yeah. nothing he could have necessarily done. I was kind of expecting a revelation that there was like a dead rat in the cellmate who had a key. And so it was like this whole thing where it's like your dead cellmate. And since he wasn't actually dead, it needed to be like, no, there's a dead rat in there. And if you had cut open right. his stomach, that guy would have survived and you could have survived too. That never came. Um, so that's kind of what my expectation was. That's what I always wondered too. Like maybe it was a, a production thing or something. If there was supposed to be something else in that room, because yeah. he doesn't really lie to these people. There's almost always supposed to be a way out. And it's one of those like, why did he say dead body? But no one, he's alive. So I don't, I never yeah. got that part. But again, maybe like you said, maybe, maybe it was a right. budget thing or maybe it became like, hey, we ran out of time at this area. We can't shoot that shot. So it's just going to be like, it's just him. Yeah. I mean, um, I, whether or not he officially lies, he certainly misleads. The intention is to have them do things that are actually going to lead to their demise right. because he doesn't trust. He's not being straightforward. Like if you do this, then you'll survive. It's, right. you know, it's very much like the, you know, I'm going to orchestrate it so that the choice you think you are making is is the one that will help you but actually it's not the one that will right. you know so so you know again whether or not he's and, being honest or not is and it up or, suck too for for adam's character because the key's gone in the very beginning of the film the key that yeah, could have saved them all and i was like which which that part which i think is explained in a sequel i was kind of reading up on that because i had the same thought like that's not fair like yeah. he never really had a chance to escape um and I believe that the girl that escapes in this one becomes an accomplice of yes, Saw she later becomes on. In, I think in the second one, I think. And I think they reveal in maybe the third movie that she is the one that actually helped him. She was helping him at this point with yeah. this with this one and was the one that left the key. And instead of putting it in his pocket, put it on him on purpose because she actually doesn't believe that people learn any lessons from these right. and she wants everyone to die. Like that's kind of her. And so like she did that on purpose. I don't know that uh, I like that retconning of it. Yeah. Um, I think it, it was probably just, you know, Oh, this was a clever way to say that the solution was there, but you know, they didn't really have a way to get it. I mean, we don't know how deep that drain went. Like, you know, he, he maybe if he had reached down there, he would have been able to, to retrieve it but maybe i think that the implication is that he wouldn't because yeah. then he could get out at the end yeah exactly and obviously he he doesn't which is also another thing that we we know for sure like there's based on the labyrinth of of the chase scene that zeb and uh our our police officer our ex-police officer danny glover right. have to go on um where they have to go and, down a ladder and go down like there's no way the doctor escaped <clears> from this <throat> with one foot and all that blah, blah. right like, it's like he definitely he dies died. also um so yeah like basically everyone dies except phone. i know like why did he throw the phone away from him and then even then it was still within reach if he just used any of the things that like he had a hacksaw still yeah could have use that he had his shirt like he told the other guy earlier to use his shirt to retrieve well, like so there's all there's kinds so many of different things he could have done to yeah. get that phone but i still i don't know that that would have saved him. like even if they even if he answers it he can't tell them where they are um right you know and maybe you know at that point okay we can get the police involved maybe they can trace the call but then you know jigsaw just gets up and takes the phone away from him i don't i exactly you know, i don't know um, and we still worry about that part. I mean, and I was thinking the same thing. I was like, your shirt, the saw, any other piece of thing that you have on you. Hell, the other guy has the top of the uh, the toilet. Like he could like shove it over there to like knock the phone to you. Like there was so many different ways to to get that. And then answer, oh, everybody's sure. alive. Okay, well, I have no idea. Like you said, but then it becomes like, where are you? Whatever. Yeah. And he doesn't have the gun. Then he sees, you know, he's going to see the orderly come in. And yeah, it becomes a whole thing. But right. I, like you said, the twist was the big thing about this film back in the day it was sure. like, oh jigsaw is really the dead guy in the room and all the other stuff which which it, i just have to say there's zero chance he could lay there motionless for that entire time <laughs> and they wouldn't see his like chest like stomach, rising yeah stuff. like like it's it's completely implausible but i don't care i, I it, it was as enjoyable. soon as I, I like i knew that was the twist so i was watching the whole movie and i just went you know what it's a stressful situation 
they're not paying attention. They don't want to look at the dead body. Right. We see the first guy has a violent reaction to it, um, right. you know, where he throws up. So we, you know what? Oh, we'll just we'll just move past it. We'll pretend yeah. I don't and care. And we're keeping Lawrence's character on stress high. Like he's always highly stressed the whole time. Yeah. So yeah, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever. My my whole thing is, and uh, you know, one of the whole reasons we're doing this is one, does it hold up still? And mm-hmm. knowing there's a twist, and that's something we've talked about before, that some of these movies with twists don't hold up. Yeah. Do you think it held up? Do you think this movie in, as a whole held up? Yeah. Like, so I will say I do think it holds up. I mean, we're, we're talking almost 20 years since it came out. This is the first time I saw it, and I very much enjoyed it. I, I okay. knew, like, I you know, I could tell that it's low budget. I'm not expecting it to be a masterpiece. It's not getting a budget like a Star Wars movie right. or a Marvel movie or anything. Like, I'm not expecting that. So, you know, are there going to be little minor movie mistakes here and there? Yes. Is there going to, you know, like, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. So when I think of does it hold up, I'm thinking about, you know, the story, the mm-hmm. characters, the motivation, the <clears> twist, <throat> all of those things. Does that hold up? Again, going into it, knowing that Jigsaw was the dead body in the room with them, mm-hmm. I still was very, you know, like I was drawn in. I was intrigued. I was, you know, oh, there's the orderly that he must be working with him. And then that major twist that, no, he's actually part of the game. Like that really worked for me. Right. Um, and I think it would even work still moving forward if I were to watch this again. I think I would still, you know, then I would be looking for different things in those scenes with the orderly. I would be looking right. at how is he actually approaching this because, you know, he's, you know, like when he uses the stethoscope, you know, kind of thing, like, you know, what is he what is he trying to accomplish there? Like, right. you know, and, and those sort of things. So, again, I think that I would be very um I, I, you know, like he's kind of, you know, hesitant to pull the trigger and kill them. And it was like, as I was watching it the first time, I thought that was odd. Like, why wouldn't he just walk in and kill? Right. Them? And it's like, oh, because actually he's <clears throat> not really a killer. He's just trying to save himself. Right. Um, so, again, I, I thought, you know, overall, I thought the movie really does hold up. You know, it's not scary in the traditional sense. There's not really jump scares or anything. I mean, there's a couple like when Jigsaw abducts them in like the flashbacks that it's kind of like, but, but it's such, there's such a buildup to it. You know exactly when it's going to happen. Right. So it's not really like, Oh, that came out of nowhere. Um, but I will say like thinking of, you know, being in a situation where you're trapped and your family is also trapped and you have to do something in order to save them that you normally wouldn't do. Like you have to kill someone in order mm-hmm. to save, like all of those things. <clears throat> like, that that is a scary thing to think about and so the psychological aspect of this i i think really held up um and again yeah i i would have to say having seen this for the first time it absolutely held up i had a blast with this movie i thought it was a lot of fun and i agree i enjoyed this film it was a good film the twist still holds for me a lot of the stuff holds up the story the acting was okay i think every all overall i would watch this one again I would introduce it to like someone chill trying to build like you still trying to see horror films yeah. and more sus- like to me, like you said this is more suspense because it's the not j- like the jigsaw weird. puppet rolling in oh yes I when, love that when, part always. when the chick you know just escapes and I'm just like that is creepy as hell yeah like, that is like on his little tricycle and you're like yeah. that is creepy and that puppet is like I it's mean I like it puppet. it's a creepy puppet and and that's what I wanted to comment on too I think what benefits this film is the low budget because for this one we don't have the cgi that's going to look bad in 10 years we don't have special effects that in 10 years oh man that's what y'all use like that's terrible kind of like how i did with the exorcist when we had the girl like back in the 70s oh my god that was so top of the line how they did all of that we don't need this literally most of this no, you're good. Oh, <laughs> I was I was doing the you know like the vomit just blah, yeah you know yeah like, and yeah. I was like what happened he threw me off <laughs> but good. like it was one of those like it wasn't it, it was so fake looking like I said my kiddo even yeah. was like oh that's terrible this one doesn't gonna isn't gonna have that same factor because we don't see him cutting his foot off we don't see like all the gore we see the aftermath of it we don't see it happening yeah. which so, which again. There is zero chance that little hacksaw is getting oh, through the bone of no, his leg. Like not that's, at all. That's that's just not how it works. He definitely doesn't have the leverage. Like, because you think of 
okay, did they used to do something like that, like Civil War times? You know, they would use a saw to cut off people's legs. Yeah, but you know, like you're you're cutting you're sawing down wood with at like that point. the yeah. leverage and all that stuff. Like that. he doesn't have the leverage. Um, you know, maybe the adrenaline would be enough to keep him from passing out. Uh, but I don't know about that. Like it just it's one of those things where it's, it's like. Uh, does it 100 percent work is it 100 percent realistic no it's not but you know we're not gonna worry about it. the electrocution that's not how electricity works no. you can't electrocute people that way um because the electric you know like everything is grounded they're it's yeah, all grounded was, like and so it's one of those yeah. things where it's like that's not how it works but i don't care Suspend just disbelief. watching the movie <laughs> i'm enjoying it I, i'm enjoying the it's, mind games that are being exactly. played um and and even they're trying to outsmart Jigsaw, like they try and you know fake the death with a cigarette, and you know clearly that's immediately like nope, that doesn't work. Um, yep. And even you know later on, when he you know shoots shoots him, he shoots him in the shoulder. Like he he's still at that point is still you know he's he's trying to save his family, obviously. Yeah. But he's also, you know, I'm not to gonna actually kill this guy. Yeah. Um, and so I liked I liked that. I will <laughs> say when when the one detective, you know, tripped that tripwire oh. and got his head blown off, I was oh. like, Oh no. <laughs> I was like, look down, I forgot about that scene. I was like, look down, look down. Nope, I forget. <laughs> Back nope, to your head's he just, gone. Boom. Oh, uh, and was so I was bad. like, I was like, that was a good one. I like that. That was and again. <laughs> A benefits with that low budget because we're not seeing all the cgi they don't show his head it's just the right. blood running down and it's just a little makeup on the back of his head to make it look missing and we're done we're not seeing all oh, <laughs> flying everywhere right. i think yeah. that's what benefits this film is that low budget and again most of it's filmed inside one room and then and then the house and that's really like yes we get a little bit here and there yeah. and quick the, the shots, house and that's it the parking garage you know, Adam's apartment gets a couple of scenes. Yeah. And then, yeah, most of it, you know, like we get the warehouse and then, yeah, I mean, it's, so it's not there. Most of it is in the bathroom. There are a few other locations, but, but yeah, you know, like, uh, and that helps you. It absolutely. Saves you that money. And um, I think I did, I was very angry at, uh, what's his face, Donald Glover's character when, mm -hmm. like, he literally sees the guy stick his head out through the window and he just like assumes that the wife is cheating on him too. And I'm like, right? how long have you, how long have you been watching this house? Like, don't like, haven't you been watching this whole time? And so wouldn't you like say this is suspicious? Like this, yeah. this doesn't fit. And even um, like Jigsaw clearly knew that Adam was surveilling the doctor. Right. Because, you know, that's part of the reason why he took him. And he's got the pictures and he's got all that stuff. Um, but then it didn't seem like even though he had been, you know, tracking and following and, and doing he he didn't seem to account for this old detective still, you know, being part of the like and, right. and having this obsession. Like, I feel like he should have known that that guy still had this obsession with the doctor and would try and become involved. And, and he, there should have been some kind of mechanism in place to, you know, stop that part keep him out of the way um, right it, that's kind of like again small nitpicks i still had a great time i, I thought still the movie was a lot it. of fun um you know i would give this probably you know seven and a half maybe even an eight out of ten like this is a lot yeah. of fun i i sit there with you uh, seven and a half eight i think is the best for this one not perfect because like you said those small flaws because of a low budget sure. but overall i think the low budget helped this film and i think i would I would not mind maybe waiting a little while and watching this again, maybe kind of forget some of the stuff again and rewatching it. Maybe yeah. again, I would recommend this for someone trying to get into horror or get into like suspenseful films. This is one I would say, take a look at it. Cause if you're like, kind of like, I don't know about the blood. There's not a lot of blood in this. No. You don't see a whole lot. I think the detective dying was probably the biggest blood scene we got maybe. Um, and again, we don't see the head explode. We just see the aftermath of the blood running down him. Right. I think that's what, again, is going to help out with this film. So I recommend it for, for new people. I would say watch this one. Skip The Exorcist. <laughs> skip Halloween because those are, well, I'm not a slasher <laughs> fan. We know this too. Well, neither yeah, yeah, one of yeah. us are slasher fans, I think. No, so. definitely not. I, I would, you know, Exorcist is good for if you're a film lover. Um, yeah. And you have to go into it knowing that it's a 70s style film. Yeah, exactly. Um, because, again, I think there's really good performances and uh, certainly the, the 
you know, suspense and tension of that movie works. It's not right. particularly scary. Um, no. But I, I, I do think, again, for a certain person, I would recommend that one. Um, Halloween, you know, again, was not for either of us. But this movie, yeah, was a lot of fun. I would definitely, as a non-horror fan, but as someone who likes psychological things, this mm-hmm. kind of felt right up my alley. It was like, it didn't have the supernatural elements or creatures or things like that. This is just like, is an evil mastermind genius manipulating people into, you know, crazy situations where they're going to die. Yeah. I kind of like that. And so, exactly. you know, I don't know that I will like the rest of the franchise. I'm not even sure I will seek out the rest of the franchise, but this first one I enjoyed. It was it? a lot of fun. Yeah. I think it was. So our next one is insidious is our next one, isn't it? Or I think I so. What I you said is it, also the same director, isn't it? I didn't even uh, know it was the same director, honestly. I, I'm pretty sure Insidious is James Wan. Again, I haven't seen it, um, but I'm pretty sure that is uh, the same director. That is James Wan. Um, and I know, and and I picked the first two. This was your pick. Yes, this was actually uh, so, my pick. Uh, yep. Again, I wanted Robert to see it. And yes, James Wan is the director of Insidious. And I actually really love Insidious too. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I really, I am glad we're doing this too because I'm learning more about the, the director's that I didn't even know I liked um because I really loved Insidious I love this one so I'm learning more about me too so there you go definitely check out all of our stuff at official gygo at YouTube and Facebook uh, and we'll have our new- next video out next week again we're doing these videos all the way up until Halloween and on Halloween day which is every Monday you guys for October and Halloween is October 31st on Monday as well so check all that out again uh, I'm Aaron and that's Robert stay geeky and get your geek on guys bye